talk, shop, pop, movies. Well, hi there. This is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile. And if you're a convicted cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop, open that is, movies and physical media. I saw a whole bunch of ramblings on the interweb lately saying how the thing and how E.T. and how Blade Runner are all 40 years old now, which is ridiculous and it makes me feel old because that means I'm almost 40 years old now. This is Wolfman Jack wondering where were you in 82? On that theme, I thought I would mention 10 films that I own here on Blu-ray or 4K that came out in 1982 that you need to own. Or at least see if you haven't. Number one, I'm doing this number one. They're not in any particular order or anything. But this one I thought I'd do first because I saw today that it is on sale yet again. This is a slasher film from 1982. A classy foreign one at that. But the Blu-ray is one of my favorite, if not my favorite slip cover. Technically it's a slip box that I own. Anytime it's on sale, I push it on Instagram. So that would be Pieces. This is one of my favorite releases I own. Not necessarily one of my favorite movies I own. I've only watched it once. Extremely enjoyable, fun chainsaw slasher flick with a hilariously awesome twist ending. But, you know, I don't want to ruin it any more than that. But this release is fantastic. You should get it. I want to say it's like 20 bucks and change right now. Usually it is a little more than that. But get it before it's gone. It's from Grindhouse Releasing. It's got, you know, embossed lettering on all the sides of it. And it's all different fonts, which I always think is fantastic. It's a three disc set, as you can see here. It's a two disc Blu-ray and it includes the soundtrack. So I'm just gonna pop it open for you quick because it's really cool. You got the soundtrack right there. Very neat. There are Cannibal Holocaust releases similar to this too, which I don't own and I need to get, but it too has the soundtrack. And you got the awesome reversible cover art there, with the old posters and what have you. I just love it. I'm gonna get a little booklet and then the two discs in there. So yeah, if you don't have pieces and you like physical media, go get it right now because it's on sale. If you haven't seen it and it looks weird and interesting, go see it. It's a fun time, even if you hate it. Or if you just got like Shudder, go watch it on Shudder or something with the Joe Bob Briggs commentary. I think that's how I first watched it. So yeah, pieces. Amazing release. Very entertaining slasher movie from 1982. All right, now I'm going to class it up a bit. This is the Oscar winner for Best Picture in 1982. That would be Gandhi. I haven't watched this in a while. I haven't had a chance to watch this since I bought the set. Gorgeous set. It's in the Columbia Classics Volume 1 set. So it's not like it's easy to come by. And it's only available in the Columbia Classics Volume 1 set. But do yourself a favor. Even if you don't want to splurge on the collection... Go out and watch Gandhi. It's a damn good movie. Ben Kingsley also won Best Actor for it. Richard Attenborough, John Hammond himself, directed the film and won Best Director for it. But yeah, if you got a good, you know, three-ish hours, let me see how long is this bastard. Three hours and 11 minutes. But it's a good one. And it's a true story. It's always interesting. But yeah, it's a, the Oscar winner for Best Picture of 1982. Gotta at least mention it. This movie... Slash movies, only one of them came out in 1982, is a fantastic sci fi adventure ish movie that kind of bombed when it came out as a cult following. I've always enjoyed it. It's got, it should be on 4K. Both of these films should be, and I don't think either of them are, but they're Disney, and you know how good they are lately at doing things. But I'm referring to Tron, the classic original. Tron. Yeah, this is the uh, little button on there right here. It's, this thing lights up. I think the batteries have died on it since I got it, you know, like 15 years ago when the uh, sequel was made, Tron Legacy, which I enjoy. It has some iffy visual effects, but it's a cool movie. The sound is amazing and the score, as I refer to in one of my uh, What the Flip videos, is also amazing. But this is a cool set if you're able to get your hands on it. It has a little stand that's still on my shelf. There are... <laughs> All the discs are in this. There's five discs, I think. And they're all just stacked up on top of each other, which, you know, everyone loves that. 
but they are available separately. This was deemed ineligible for best visual effects uh, in the Academy Awards because they considered it cheating that they used computers. So that's what's happened in the last 40 years as far as visual effects goes. And the visual effects in this movie are ridiculous. The behind the scenes of how they made the original Tron is like crazy and how difficult that movie was to pull off. The visual style that movie had. I recommend you watch it and the behind the scenes because it's extremely interesting. I thought this movie came out in 1984, but it indeed came out in 1982. So I thought I would throw it in here. It's a sh shout factory or something. I wish I had Scream Factory. Ice Cream Factory. Scream Factory release. I think it's still in print. It's an older one. And that would be Class of 1984. Starring, not starring, but Michael J. Fox is in the film. I think it's like his first movie. <laughs> and there's the uh, alternative cover art there. This is a pretty damn good movie, in all honesty. And I like that the disc art is actually different than either of the cover artworks. That is neat. It's been a couple years since I watched this one, but I remember liking it a lot. I first saw it because uh, my buddies and I have what we call our shitty movie collection, a bunch of old VHSs we bought, and we got Class of 1999 to The Substitute, so then we went back and saw Class of 99 and then Class of 84, and we watched them all in reverse, oddly enough. Uh, but this is the only one that's like a genuinely pretty good movie. So I would recommend you give it a watch if you haven't seen it. For some reason, all, like, everyone's favorite films now from 1982 were the movies that nobody saw when they came out. <laughs> or everybody hated at the time. This is one of those movies. It made money in theaters, but it wasn't, like, a hit. And it was panned across the board because of one obvious flaw in the movie. And by flaw, I mean subjective flaw, not actual flaw. And that's because Michael Myers wasn't in it. And that would be Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Which, after decades of watching Halloween and its sequels, how many times over and over, this has become my second favorite of the films in the franchise. After the original one, because that's the one that started it all. And I just grew up with it and I loved it. This one, I didn't really like the first time I saw it either. I knew it didn't have Michael Myers going into it. I wasn't one of those people, you know, back in the day when they saw it, they were like, what the hell? But my, I had Halloween 1 and 2, and I loved them both on VHS. And I was like, I want to see the next one. And my mom's like, that one's dumb. It does have Michael Myers in it. So I knew going in, it didn't have Michael Myers in it. But the movie itself, I thought, was really weird and stupid at the time. Having watched it a handful of times since then, I have fallen in love with this movie. It is fantastic. I need to get the 4K of it. This is the Blu-ray case that comes out of the 15-disc collection, just in case you're wondering what the hell this is with the black Blu-ray case and all. The only downside to these releases is that they don't have the uh, reversible cover arts that Screen Factories normally would, but it at least has the original poster on the cover, which sort of makes up for it. But yes, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, outstanding. I'm even using my Halloween 3 Season of the Witch beer glass. I had I checked to make sure... It was 1982, and I was like, all right, I'm going to drink out of this one. Ah, attractive. Science fiction. Hmm, yes. <laughs> all the sci-fi movies in 1982 are apparently amazing, and nobody liked it when they came out. This is another one of those. Another one that, it's, it literally changed science fiction films for the last 40 years, yet it, like, got shit on upon its release. Partially because the theatrical version isn't as good as the eventual director's and final cuts. And when I say director's and final cuts, you all know what movie I'm talking about. Uh, that would be Blade Runner, yes. Blade Runner from 1982. I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. 40 years old now. It's kind of, it's a slow film. It, like I have to be in the mood to want to watch this movie. Same thing goes for the sequel. But at least this one's not half an hour too long. Like the I would argue that the second one is honestly a better movie. If it was a half an hour shorter. <laughs> but this one, it changed the game as far as how the visuals and science fiction the visuals and science fiction films were from then on out. And this is a cool set. I mean, I think this one's on 4K. I just don't have it yet. I need to get the uh, 2049. But this one's got the final cut. The, uh, what is this one? Disc 2, which is the DVD. Disc 3, which has the theatrical, international, and director's cuts on it. 
And then it has the fourth disc, which is a DVD, which is just some special features. And it's got a Blu-ray on disc five that is the work print cut. So that is cool. It has that many versions. I'm sure the 4K has got all these cuts on it too. But Blade Runner, it changed movies. It just, nobody really noticed it until two decades later or so. Back to Screen Factory, apparently. This is a dream collaboration film, and it is arguably the best Blu-ray release for a single movie that Scream Factory has ever done, and probably will ever do, because now they're getting into 4Ks, and even their 4Ks aren't as nice as this. I am referring to George Romero and Stephen King's anthology great creep show. It's the epitome of uh, anthology horror films, honestly. There's few that you could even say are better than this. And even then, it's kind of based on people's, you know, <laughs> opinion to opinion. But objectively, this is easily one of the best horror anthology films ever. But yeah, this has a big slip box, which all of the 4K should have, but don't. Like, Screen Factory, if you're gonna if you're gonna have 4Ks, make them nice like this. If you can have this five years ago come out, you can do a cool uh, slip box for all the other movies. It's got a big fat booklet in there. And by fat, I mean, you know, like 60 pages. But that's cool. And it's got double reversible artwork, which is nice. Because this is a po poster artwork. And on the other side is the other poster artwork. Neither of them are the original artworks on the front of the case. This release, I didn't get it right when it came out. But seeing the uh, rumors of its release and so forth was the thing that basically re made me realize Screen Factory existed. I had already bought the... Halloween set years before just because I like Halloween didn't know it was the thing but yeah this is arguably the best soul film release that Screen Factory has ever done so if you haven't seen it go see it if you haven't bought this I'd say get it because it's an awesome set but I have a feeling this is going to be a 4k at this year it's its 40th anniversary so this October would be a perfect time to release this on 4k so you know maybe hold off on that but if they don't do a big, you know, slip box like this, maybe I'll get the 4K and slide it inside of it and keep this because it deserves it. But this is number eight. I'd say it's without a doubt Steven Spielberg's greatest film from 1982. That would be Poltergeist. I'm just kidding. That's an inside joke to people who obsess over physical media on Instagram. Steven Spielberg did make Poltergeist. Uh, but uh, Poltergeist is getting a 4K this year, hopefully um for his 40th anniversary and that'll be amazing i will happily get that one very cool i've had this blu-ray digi book since forever and it's an awesome case i love the warner brothers digi books they are beautiful fold open like say and it's got shit that falls out of them apparently but, but yeah there's the disc right there so awesome awesome movie i'm not a huge fan of haunted house ghost horror movies and the fact that this is rated pg is hilarious because there was no pg-13 at the time and apparently it wasn't bad enough to be an r i mean you got parents smoking the marijuana there's they're they're huffing on doobies in the bedroom with their kids around doing the jazz cabbage and they got some guy literally peeling off his own face in a mirror and it's got the same rating as frozen Poltergeist, an amazing movie. I have a second, the second and third ones on the Scream Factory, and I haven't even watched them yet. I, pulled, I bought them like the day they announced they were going on a print, and I still haven't gotten around to watching them because I have a kid, and it's hard to watch several horror movies around him. I can, I can, I can watch this with them because it's rated PG, but I can't watch Poltergeist two and three because they're rated R. I think Steven Spielberg's Poltergeist was actually directed by Toby Hooper, who directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just so you know. Don't at me. I'm just making a joke because of people and their fake 4K artwork. Speaking of Steven Spielberg movies from 1982, though, um, you can't not talk about E.T. It's one of the few movies that I've owned on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and now 4K. There's only... I could count them on my fingers how many I've done that with, probably. So this is a great one. And it's got a gorgeous release. It's got... Kind of like the, uh, the Creep Show set. It's got a big old book. And a nice slip box. So for this one is lenticular. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's good. 
I guess something funny I never noticed until I saw a video about it recently, talking about E.T., is that, uh, like, the Amblin logo is this, you know, with Elliot with the little cape. In the original movie, it's been so long since I watched it, and I don't remember, because it's just, I've seen it so many times as a kid. It's just one of those things you just, like, sure, whatever. He didn't have the little cape in front of the moon in the original version. Steven Spielberg only added that to the 2002 20th anniversary version so it would look like the Amblin logo. Yeah. What can what can I say about E.T. that hasn't been said? It was nominated for a zillion Oscars. It won for all of which technicals, including best score, this music, and this movie by John Williams. Literally, like, tears me up when I listen to it. In or out of the movie. <laughs> it's that damn good. But it's not the best alien movie to come out in 1982, in my opinion. Sure, it's the best for the for the fam, for all the kids to watch. You know, it's rated PG just like Poltergeist, so the whole family can watch it together. But now that I'm you know, an older, older gentleman, if you can call me that, nothing beats John Carpenter's The Thing for me. This has become and probably has been for a while, even without me admitting it. My favorite John Carpenter film. I got the 4K recently, and I had the Screen Factory Blu-ray. This isn't even worth selling at this point, so I might as well just have two cool versions of it, right? And I'm guessing the special features are exactly the same on both, so whatever. Makes my Screen Factory set that much cooler. You know what? I'm gonna... I don't like these. I don't like how similar they look. I don't like that. I'm gonna flip this back around. The... I usually prefer the uh, original poster artwork on these Screen Factory releases. And I kind of like flip them every time I watch them. Because <laughs> I'm a dork. But since I got the 4K now. I'll bring it back to the original artwork like that. So. The thing. It's like E.T. What can I say about it? It's a movie. Like half the movies I've talked about. It bombed. And got destroyed at by critics when it came out. Nobody gave a shit about the thing. Worst timing ever. It's the other alien movie that was out in theaters at the same time as E.T. just getting annihilated at the box office. It got it I think it won or I can't remember if it was nominated or won the Razzie Award for Worst Original Score by Ennio Morricone. The score in this movie is amazing. It's weird that John Carpenter didn't do the score. I always find that funny. But it's very carpentery the score in the movie. But I also read Years later, obviously, this is recent, that Ennio Morricone, who did the Hateful Eight score, which won Best Original Score at the Oscars, finally, for the brilliant, brilliant composer, he used pieces of the Thing's score in the film. Whether they were in the Thing or not, he used parts of that score throughout Hateful Eight, and then he won an Oscar for it. So he won a Razzie and an Oscar for parts of the same score. There are 10 fantastic 4Ks and or Blu-rays that you need to own, or at least see if you haven't. And don't forget about little Tron up here. Everyone forgot about Tron, but not me, not today. I don't care if they cheated with computers. I love it. And you should love it too. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Talk. Shop. Pop. Movies.